Hi, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I start? Okay. Uh, this is my day-to-day -day job. Uh, in fact, I take care of your application on top of the cloud. And um, it's a very interesting place because we have a very good overview of what people are doing with the application, all the code, and they can manage um, the leverage, how all, all they can be efficient. So it's a very good place to have an overview of what is moving on the developer industry. I think today developers are more and more creative. They are handling a lot of business in the company. Basically, if you think about what is a developer today, you have a lot of value because people who makes the tools of the company are running the business. Every company relies on informatic stuff, on computer stuff today to make the business grow. And this value, how, to, how is the business managing, how, what is the tools they need, is handling by developers. So right now, developer is important, and the question is how we can make them more efficient. Because if developers are important, uh, it's sad if they have some lose of time, if they are not efficient, and if they are not happy. Okay. Um, last years, we, 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 we just see uh, the open source work process while widely adopted. Uh, GitHub rising high, uh, Agile method rising high, we use um, a lot of uh, backtracking and things like that. So the open source method uh, and processes are working a lot and uh, people are handling a lot of stuff with this kind of thing. The point is, in open source we say release early and release often. If you think about it with your product, you can see it's release early and deploy often. The thing is, is it your right added value? <clears throat> when you are a developer, your added value is understanding what is the business, what is the core value of your development, knowing the market, thing like that. It's not doing some noisy thing like, okay, I have to SCP my touchy extract it, I go in the Temex, kill the old process, thing like that. It's not interesting to do that. Your core value is not that. Your core value is to think, okay, we have to add this feature and thing like that. So the deployment process has to be easy on your company. Who have a development who consider easy in their company? Nobody, really. It's hard to deploy for you. I think there are just only way to deploy for a developer. Git push. All the stuff beyond that is not a job. The job of a developer is to make code, not doing some ops crazy thing. Just git push and it's working, okay? It's better if you're doing git push on a continuous integration system, we're running some unit testing and things like that, and the, the system will be handling the deployment, but it's not mandatory. The point is, when I speak about software factory and things like that with people, they're always thinking, well, one day we have the time, we can take care of that, and uh, we make the good thing. We, we have a continuous integration, software fabrics, Bug striking, yeah, one day we're doing all of this stuff, but uh, right now we have no time. It's not the good point of view. You have to do small piece of a good software factory by small piece of good software factory. In fact, don't, don't, uh, don't think only big company can have a real system, on a real build factory. You, you just have to, to think, okay, I want to deploy, I just have to, to make the thing we can deploy, okay? This is why all the team of the software development have uh, to, to be okay to deploy. In fact, 
in, in many dev teams, only the lead dev can push the deployment process. This is very bad because your developers cannot understand what is handling in the process. They cannot, they cannot add a feature from their own. They, they cannot push some innovation in, the, in, in their own way. So all the team have to be able to deploy in the same application in the same team, okay? And you can be able to deploy your app several times a day. Who we'll deploys their application several times a day in the room? So, if you want to deploy several times a day, push your deployment have to be simple. You have to think about just don't lose your time to make some crappy stuff. For example, at Clever Cloud, we're pushing about 10, 15 version a day in a process of deployment. We are, we are a platform as a service. People are running on top of us, but we update the platform about 15 times a day. So we can doing this if you have the good deployment process. For this, there is a secret. You have to split your app. If you have a big cake, it's better if you have small brick in your app. There is very, very, very few things you have to understand about uh, the, the card. If you have a small base card, it will be okay. If you add a feature, it will be not fail all the card. What is important to understand is, if the base card is big, you will fail to add feature time to time. It's, it's, it's a very bad thing to have a lot of code in the same project because lots of code are not understandable. Uh, if uh, anybody uh, opens a code of uh, open office in the room, it was one of the messy code I ever see in my life. There is part of code never referenced everywhere in the application. The code seems to be un unused, but if you delete it, the build will fail. But the code is never used. And you never see one thing popping in the code, but if you cut it, it fails. It's the kind of thing we can have if you have a very big and large code base. So keep your project simple and small. Each module of your application has to be viewed as a service by others. There is two ways of communicate. I can communicate to say something happens, and I don't care about what you are doing with that. Or I want an information, or something happens, and I want an answer. There is two protocols widely used in the industry: HTTP, MQP, uh, RabbitMQ for the, the one you don't know. Uh, if you are doing stuff with these two protocols, you are handling all the problem you can have in your application with the two protocols while they use in all technology. So it's simple to use that. So if each module of your application communicate with each other like they are services or just they are clients, it will work time to time. Another thing quite interesting with module, if you can choose the best tool to solve your problem. How many times you see a company saying, okay, we have a large basket of Java 1.4. We are doing all the life, all the product will, we, will be code with Java because all the code is in Java in the company. It's not a good thing. Sometimes some problem can be solved very easily with one tool. For example, you can solve with Prolog a problem you, can, you cannot solve with 600 lines of Java. You can solve it with four lines of Prolog. So use Prolog for this problem, communicate with HTTP, job done. And if you have a problem with Prolog one day, just cut it and replace it with Datalog. It's not a problem because your application is just model communicate with each other. So you have to to, to take the good tools in the, in the good way, to use the good technology to simplify your problem, to be easy to implement your problem. What is interesting is you can learn new things and innovate. Because if the code base is 
it's, it's small. You can move it to the new version of frameworks, the new version of language. You can move it to another language. If you, you, you would just want to, 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 to give a try to a technology, you can make some Go or Node.js inside your application very simply with no harming all the place, all the technology you have. It's simple to do, okay? The good point is if you have a small code base, a code base multiple technology and communication between each other, you can kill the legacy. If you have thousands of code, you cannot say, okay, we have to rebuild it from the ground. If you just have a few lines of code, if a module doesn't do their job, or if you want to, to push a new technology instead of, you can just say, okay, dump the code, rewrite all. Because you know what you have to do. There is a simple process, you have the, the, the service mandatory, you know what you have to do to API, you know what you have to do to process, so it's simple to rewrite it. We just take a few days. For example, like Clever Cloud, we rebuilt the Git system. All the Git system have been recorded from the ground in two days. Because it was simple. The first time it was hard, the legacy of code was hard, okay. Just crush it, go to the garbage, and rewrite it from the ground. It's not, big, it's not a big stuff, because your code are small, and you can kill the legacy, and always have fresh code with fresh technology inside your, your infrastructure. Another thing quite interesting is you can asynchronize all your deployment stuff. Uh, a few months ago, we were working with a company um, to build a big communication event. And uh, always based on WebSocket and stuff like that. And we have a thousand, a thousand of users in the same times with problems, and we have to fix it. It was possible because there is just a simple thing in, in, in the heart of the infrastructure, just doing, handling the event. Listen MQP, emitting MQP to just scheduling what to have to do in the, in the system. We redeploy the front of the application thousands of times, but never this part. So the flow will never be interrupted, but all the thing can be deployed synchronously. Okay? The other way about modules in your application is about your team. Your team will be happy to be modular. You can have people working on some technology or from another technology. You, your team can be modular and you, you never be uh, um, in the position of say, okay, I have to find all the experts on Java in the previous place. Because it's hard to find all the experts. Your team can be more complex, more open-minded, and uh, you can have a lot of good idea coming from lots of community and technology if you're using a lot inside your thing. So modularize your code will modularize your team. And if your team is modular, it's great because people are happy, they are not losing their time on meetings and things like that. They just respect the happy eye and it's okay. What's it's very important is if you go this beyond, you think, okay, I have a product, and majority of product improvement I push by the, the marketing team. And the marketing team say always, okay, I want this in the UI, this in the UI, and this in the UI. They always want to change the user interface. If you split the user interface and the backend, you can give them to developers handling all the user interface problem uh, all the backend will be on new management. So you split the management of the product life between marketing and user relations with people handling the real problem stuff. So it's quite important to have a real uh, separation between the two. If you want this working, there is something quite important, is version. You have to work version everything. API and data inside NoSQL. Who is using NoSQL, JSON document store, or something like that? For several years now. 
there is always a problem with that. Is data change time to time? And we are doing some bad stuff like, okay, I test if this field is present on the JSON document. I know it's post May 2000 and so it's, it's crazy. You don't have to do that. Just put a version number on model on everything you do and it will save your life one day. You never, th you never know when it comes, but you need one time the version to be able to split the code between the legacy way and the new way, especially on data. What you have to do with that is to get the get document uh, on the database, check the version, do the update, push it to the code we're using the last version. We have always to use the last version of the document, the last prototype version of the document, but be able to treat all the old-fashioned document. Between if your documentary bears grow a lot, you have thousands of documents and you cannot batch all the documents to update them in the same time. You have to update them in the time you use it. So version everything. Another thing about uh, modules is HTTP. There is a problem with developers. They never read documentation. I know, because in Clever Cloud's report, the mail I send them all is, the documentation is here. The thing is, HTTP is wonderful, but people say something like that. Okay, to, well done, it's an error, and the message is, I can find the file. You are in HTTP. Use a lot protocol you can have because there is a lot of good things built in in the protocol. N um, you have to read the documentation, the protocol you use, the library you use, because you can do with HTTP error handling a lot of things built in in the system. The, the error I just showed you was on Facebook a few months ago on Facebook. <laughs> they never read HTTP. There are verbs and error code. So use it. It's interesting. We can do a lot of things with that. Of, it do, if you don't like HTTP doing some soap stuff, it's not a problem if you like XML. <laughs> when you're writing some code, you're managing your team and your project, you always have to think, okay, it's my first day working on this code base, oh, I can bootstrap the process. If installation of the, the app on your computer and development environment is a document like this, saying, okay, you have to create a document uh, slash var www, no, 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 sorry, it's not good. You have to underling script to underling this kind of thing. It has to be fluently. Imagine, um, tomorrow, you will have a large fundraising on your project and hire 10 developers. How can then be efficient the first day in application? You have to think, you have to be simple to be in application and say, okay, I can handle this stuff and start to work on the, on the application right now. There is something make you happy about that. If you modernize your application and respect all the good practice of deployment on scripting and things like that, the documentation will be slim. And developer never like to write documentation, right? So this is a good part. If, um, I, I'm doing a lot of uh, things, just do that, do that, do that. Has um, Clever Cloud really work that way? Yeah. In fact, when you are developing uh, inside the Clever Cloud core team, there is all this technology used. The huge co uh, code base is uh, on Java, but all the deployments are made by Ruby. The, the monitoring stuff and a lot of 
what is virtual machine and things like that is on Node.js. All the data stuff are treated by Scala. So it's a huge C port for handling small bugs. So it's possible to do that. And there is communication between the application only using HTTP and RabbitMQ, and it's working a lot. So there is about 20, 25 modules inside Clever Cloud, and never a fail on deployment. Why? Because the, the, the API is quite clearly defined. Um, I hope you, you will be jump in the modularization on the API. And uh, I think it's question time. Uh, five minutes for question time. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Are in the room? I have a question. <laughs> so you say that uh, you talk a lot about documentation. I'll just ask you in a cloud and in a s uh, in the API space, is documentation is a bug or a feature? Um, I think when you have a good API, you don't need documentation at all because at the beginning, there is some, some uh, good things uh, all the industry lose, like WEDL uh, format. The, the Wordle format was very, very great because you can describe all the APIs simply and say, okay, this is what you can get. Um, and in another end, the way is people don't make good APIs, so they have to document it. And after that, they don't update the documentation when they update the API. And uh, some big company like Dropbox have something right in the documentation. It's not the same thing running on the servers. And the SDK, the, the software development kit they, they give, uh, do another way. So it's a bug. I think when you have a good API, you don't have to, to have a documentation because it's simple, it's natural speaking for developers, I think. So how do you manage it at Clever Cloud? Yeah. We have a Waddle file. <laughs> no, yeah. Right now we have a Waddle file, but uh, we will push a great documentation uh, because developers have to be guided in the first steps of using API. Have you thought about self-documented documented APIs? So basically, if you hit the endpoint, it gives you the list of routes, and if you hit the routes, it gives you back the uh, what you need for that route or endpoint. Uh, I think just example for that, and the word of file is enough. Um, what, what, what we do at the first time is a word of file and an endpoint with all the object format you can get on JSON. It was simple, it was clearly noted in the, in the on point. But the thing is, more than documentation, to be happy developer needs something like a console for test. Uh, you know, some APIs, uh, the documentation is clear, it's simple, you need to use it. But to do your first request to the API, you have to work about 20, 25 minutes doing some code, you don't know really what to do. And uh, after you do the first request and start to understand. Uh, and some other APIs, they give you a console, it's clearly you can test your first, um, your first request and it's working well and you understand clearly what you have to do. So I think it's a good way to document API to make some example, console, and things like that. You have to, to, to give tools to developers, not knowledge. We have time for one last question. <coughs> so uh, you speak a bit about modularity. So there's always a trade-off between being too modular and being highly performant. Uh, so how would you decide between when you go for more modularity or when you want to have more uh, code together in order to achieve performance? The point uh, with performance is um, in in. Um, in a, in, in a wrong way, uh, developers are doing some stuff like performance improvement before they have performance problem. And 
lot of stuff are handling my backends. For example, um, we, have, we have people on top of Clever Cloud uh, doing some caching of libraries and files on top of a short file system we give. The short file system is a low uh, IOPS style, so it's, it's slow. And basic caching system are handling by the platform, so they are losing time to doing that. I think it's the same thing for modularization. A lot of people thinking, yeah, I have performance problem if I'm doing an HTTP request or if I'm doing uh, with letting that to uh, IMQP stuff and queuing. But it's not real in the, in the, the majority of time. They haven't problem of performance. They have problem to do the stuff, and after that, you can see I have a performance problem and solve the performance problem between models. Because lots of lots of protocol are, are able to be used. If you have performance problem with RabbitMQ, just use zero MQ. It's faster, it's less secure, but it's faster. And um, it will handling the problem for large things like video game industry and things like that. We have massive performance system. It's working well. So I don't think it's a big problem. Thank you, Quentin. So you, you should really give me advices to make uh, good slides uh, <laughs> like this. So thank, thank you. you. Please, some applause for Quentin. Thank you very much. <laughs>